As Ordo Scarada looked out at his farm, he remembers a time when war was all he knew. It's what he was created for. It was a stroke of luck that he and his clone brothers were adopted into this Mandalorian clan. Order 66 weighed heavily on them, and they all left the Grand Army of the Republic because of it. They were warriors first and foremost, but this was no kind of war they wanted any part in. Not many other Mandalorians knew they were on Mandalore now. The new Mandalore, Bogatan Kreese, was about the only one, but she knew they could be counted on if they were ever called upon. But this was a time of new peace on Mandalore. The Clone Wars and the Galactic Civil War had ended. Then, Ordo is called into the briefing room he designed for his adopted clone brothers so they could feel a little sense of nostalgia. Today, on Star Wars Fanatic. As Ordo rushed into the briefing room, he knew this had to be important. Only the Mandalore herself knew how to contact them. By the time he entered the room, Bo-Katan was already on the hollow projector. All Mandalorians, assistance is needed at the capital. A remnant of the Empire is attacking, and there are too many to fight off with what we have. The transmission was cut short. She seemed really distressed and was in full armor. Ordo's instincts kicked in and he looked at his brothers. We have to help, but we will for sure lose our secrecy. All in attendance nodded, as if to say, let's do it, it's what we were made for. They had been sheltering other clone brothers that had left the Republic and adopted them into their Mandalorian culture. They found a way to stop the accelerated aging that was put in them by the Kaminoans that they hated so deeply. Now, biologically in their 40s, they have not forgotten the training from both the Republic and that of their adopted father, Cal Scarada. They learned the creed well, practicing the Resilnaran Super Commando Codex as passed down to them from their father, his father Munin, and his adopted father Jango Fett. Ordo and his brothers donned their Beskar armor, boarded their transport, and set off for the capital. When they got there, it was worse than they assumed. Imperials by the thousands were fighting hundreds of Mandalorians. They could make out signets as they approached. Death Watch, Night Owls, New Mandalorians, all fighting together. The pilot then jolted the ship starboard in order to avoid incoming fire. They had been spotted. Two Imperial walkers took aim and shot again. The small vessel easily avoids the blasts. The crew hurry into their rear drop exit and jetpack the rest of the way down to the surface as the pilot sets the craft down out of sight, awaiting a call for a pickup. The brothers felt at home because fighting was natural to them. They were easily cutting through the Imperials, dropping to the ground to slice through them with fiber blades, picking stormtroopers up and carrying them high into the sky and dropping them, then shooting again as they head back down in a spiral pattern and repeating the process a couple more times, until Clan Scarada was forced to the ground by TIE Fighters, but not before taking out a few of them. They had not lost their edge at all. They fought their way to the palace, but realized there were too many troops to fight all of them. It was not in their nature to retreat, so they stayed and fought, then saw it. The weapon Bo-Katan had told them about a long time ago, a weapon that would target Beskar armor and superheat it until its wearer was virtually evaporated. They watched as many Mandalorians' armor fell from the sky or collapsed empty where the warrior had once stood fighting. This was not a typical Imperial takeover. This was meant to be the end of the Mandalorians forever. Ordo Scarada watched as two of his brothers were hit. One moment they were there fighting, the next they were just empty suits of armor. He clicks on his helmet comm link. We have a choice, brothers. Stay and fight or regroup to fight another day. I suggest the latter, but I will leave it up to you. He didn't have to see the looks on their faces. He knew the look of being overwhelmed and he knew they would stay, fight, and die if he wanted them to. But that was not what he wanted. Fighting to save Mandalore and dying only stopped Mandalore from rebuilding. We agree, let's regroup. They had to find a way out and not get spotted. Fighting to the palace was difficult, but there weren't many troops guarding it once they got closer. However, 
Troops were moving in by the thousands. Cutting through the palace was their only shot. There was a network of tunnels below to escape through. The fighting wasn't as difficult the closer they got, but they still had to maneuver so they weren't targeted. Inside, there were guards, death troopers. Not many, but enough to cause a commotion if they were noticed. They snuck up behind two of them and snapped their necks easily. These guys must be new, exclaimed one brother. Yeah, we would have heard us coming, ha ha ha, said another. Ordo remained poised. Brothers, stay close and keep quiet. They finally made their way to the tunnels below, and it was just as Ordo Scarata had thought, deserted. Relieved on one hand because it was better than running into an Imperial cleanup squad, but still saddened. All Mandalorians knew of this escape route, and there were none down there. But there was no time to dwell on it if they were to get out of alive from this situation to fight another day. As they made their way through the network of winding tunnels, they started to realize the bombing above had slowed almost to a stop. Feeling the heaviness of the loss of Mandalorian lives, they pressed forward, staying alert but determined to get out. Once they reached the exit, Ordo again clicked his helmet comlink and hailed the pilot, ready for pickup at these coordinates. Fly low and fast. Get here quickly. It was only a matter of minutes before the craft was just feet above the ground ahead of them. Using their jetpacks for a boost, they all boarded with a jump. Get us out of here, but stay low and fast until we are out of sight of the capital. And so they did. But just before they were out of sight, they witnessed the most horrific sight. Beams of fire began raining onto the capital from just outside the atmosphere. Everything was instantly ablaze. Small specks of, sp of fire could be seen shooting out from the ground, and they knew this wasn't rubble. These were Mandalorians. I hate to sound defeated, but what can we do now? We know the Empire likes their big weapons, but we aren't some lucky farm boys that can attack something like this, shouted Lang Scarada. Ordo answers, we are going to find as many Mandalorians as we can. Remember father telling us of another clone of Jango Fett, an unaltered clone? He would be about our age. He was trained by Jango. Hopefully he can help us. Okay, so that's part three of my Imperial Purge of Mandalore fan fiction. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I love hearing from everyone and engaging with you as much as I can. Should I continue the story or stop here? And just a heads up, channel memberships are now live for $2, $5, and $10 a month. And if you are new to the channel or have been on the fence about it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date with my Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and Jango Fett content. Also, hit the thumbs up to show your love for the hard work I put into each video and share the video with a friend. Let's see if we can get this one over 2,000 views. Thank you for watching, and remember, this is the way. The only way.